All right, so now I think I've got the reference I need. I just want some, um, some debris to maybe inform my horizontal sketch. And I'd like each of you to do a horizontal and a portrait format or vertical format sketch. So I'm going to mark the other debris I have. I really like this one, but it's definitely more horizontal than vertical. So I'm going to build this one around the debris. And it's from a, a little small plane crash. It's got a nice kind of focal point. It's got that red accent right there. And now I just need to put that in a swamp at dusk in a storm, right? So this, your drawing does not need to be great. This is number one, four, my horizontal. So I'm going to mark it with an additional color. And then, let's see, I'm looking at the angle of that. <coughs> what other references would be useful? I really like this one. I'm going to put that in the far background. At least half of the far background, right? So this is going to be number two. I'm not going to bother with naming them. Misty, canopy, whatever it is. And then I need another half of that back skyline. Because remember, we don't want to use just one reference and um, like put little things on it like a sticker sheet. Okay, then I'm thinking maybe this tree group I can also use here. So we have the tree and that skyline behind it. So this is number three, tree group. I'm not going to relabel it. I'm just going to, because it's number one here, but I'm going to give it its color so it shows up in my yellow group, along with the other things I'm using for my horizontal. All right, I definitely want the moon. Put it off, off to the right here, that's four. That's gonna be in both. And I definitely want the storm sky. Blending everything together, that's five. And then I need a lot of fore, foreground. And I think this one will work really well as foreground. So that's six. In my yellow. So I have six references for yellow. And then I can plop these other things in where I need them. The roots, the tree, they're, they're kind of bonus elements. This little piece of debris, when I need them. All right, so let's do that sketch. Now I'm just, just going to look at these yellow elements so I can use view options. Ah, what happened? Use view options and make them a little bit bigger. There it is. So what I'm going to do is just look at yellow, go to view options, make those bigger. And I have all six. And now when I sketch, I can see clearly what I'm doing. And if you're doing it in your sketchbook, you have even more room, right? Because you can use your whole screen for this. So the foreground is going to be water here. Now that's six with the debris kind of nestled in it. And that's going to be fun because I can do reflections of the debris, all kinds of good stuff. 
and then your tree roots and whatever. Okay, now I have two options that I've worked up. And ideally, as a creative person, you're not just doing two options because your boss tells you to do two options. You're doing two options because you're actually open to different approaches. You don't want to be too locked in on only one approach too early. So I'm going to let you guys decide which one should I work up. And I'll tell you, most of my classes always tell me horizontal. But that's very typical of landscapes, right? This would work perfectly well as, just as well as a concept art for a fantasy landscape. And in some ways, portrait might be better for a personal portfolio because it can print out larger without having to be a panoramic, if that makes sense. So what do you guys think? Landscape format, port okay, so portrait format. We have one vote for the bottom. Let's have hands raised for the bottom one, just for the demo. Doesn't mean you have to. <coughs> see two hands. All right, what about for the, <laughs> the horizontal one? I see more hands for that. Okay. So now, now that I know which direction I'm going on, I'm going to put a little star next to it. I'll ask you to do this in your sketchbooks so I can see that you're coming up with options and declaring one. I'm going to save my sketch. And now this is what you're going to do. You need to get a digital version of that into your computer. So for me, it's easy. I drew it digitally. Now all I need to do is crop my sketch down to the rough borders of my image. Right? I can even rotate my crop. And I'll show you how to do this from your sketchbook. So that's my sketch. I'm going to save this as something new. my horizontal version. I'm going to save it just as a JPEG. Okay, to the desktop. <coughs> Full quality. Close this and I'm not going to save because I saved it right before I did the crop. Okay, now how do you take your sketchbook How do I get a digital image from it? We're going to use some of the, the built-in tools on these computers. Because you could take a digital camera and photograph it and then import the photo. You could scan it on a scanner. We have cameras built into these computers. So we're going to use the FaceTime program in your dock. And once you know what sketch you're going to use, you'll see your, your image. You're going to hold up your sketchbook. I like this dead tree sketch there. Okay. Then you're going to do a shortcut, which I need you to know, Command Shift 4. So you hit Command with your thumb, Shift with your pointer finger, and four with your ring finger. Hit all three and your cursor, you can let go then, your cursor becomes a little bullseye target. And this is for a selected screen grab. Then you are going to hold up your sketch and you're going to click and drag a box around what you want to capture. And then when you let go, it will take the picture and put it on the desktop. There it is. Then you double click, you open that up in preview. Now, I, I did that uh, once before when I did a little quick self-portrait beginning of class. So what's the problem with that? Well, this image is only 72 dots per inch. It's screen resolution. But it will work as our blueprint, right? The other problem is it is a mirror image. You can tell from the writing it's reversed. So in preview, you double click, you open it in preview, your screen grab. You're going to go to Tools. And you're going to say flip horizontal. And that will make it 
So it's not a mirror image anymore. Then I would go to tools and say adjust color. And then I would just do auto levels. And if you want, you can kind of take some of the color out. You can adjust the highlights, you know, until you see your sketch exactly as you want. And preview, remember the danger of preview is it automatically saves when you close it. So when you close it, it will have those adjustments. There it is. Okay, then what I want you to do is to open that screenshot with Photoshop. Okay, then because you have this in your sketchbook already, I want you to use the crop tool. We haven't used that before. <laughs> These little videos. Ah. It trims or expands the edges of an image. It's very good. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag around the borders of our sketch. So we don't need to worry about our notes because they're already in our sketchbook. And we can reference our sketchbook while we do this project on the computer. But I want to move the crop borders right to around my sketch. And then hit return. And if you need to, you can even select your sketch, Command A to select all, and then we can use Command T, and we can kind of straighten out your sketch should we need to, all right? If that's helpful, if your sketch is just really wonky, you can stretch it, push it, pull it. Okay, now this isn't the greatest landscape. It's a square. Square is not a good format for a landscape, right? And there's not a lot of five references going on. But if this were my project, the next step would be go to image, image size, and we need to make this print quality. So we're going to resample it. So it's not just 72 pixels per inch anymore. We're going to make it 350, our lab standard. And we're going to make it at least 14 inches at its, at its biggest dimension. So since this is a square, it's going to be around 14 inches square. Okay, it's going to make it look really blurry, right? But we can still tell everything that's going on. And now when I bring in my 10 megapixel or larger reference, it's going to be the right resolution for printing. See, so that's screen resolution. This is 10 megapixels. And then we can place it and decide what to do with it. All right, let me do that on top of my, my project. So I'm going to open up my sketch. I'm going to open it with Photoshop. I've already cropped down to it. It's just a JPEG, right? And what I'm going to do is go to image size and change it, have resample on, because this is wider than it is tall, it's going to be 14 inches wide by 350 pixels per inch. And that does, that does soften my digital painting a little bit. You see those edges? But you'll see it a lot more when you take something from a photograph and, and upsample it. Okay, now, let me select it all, let me transform it, and really fill the corners. But I'm going to try to keep, come on, I'm going to try to keep my, um, the little box I drew within it so I know the edges I had in mind. To me, this is a really important part of digital art, that it not look machine made, that it keeps that hand um, kind of spontaneous mark and decision making. Whether you draw digitally or whether you draw in a sketchbook and bring it in, we want this to be the basis of our composition. Even though it doesn't look like much, I can always go back to my full sketchbook, which is here, and know what all those things are. All right, close this one. So now, this is a new thing. I'm going to make a duplicate of this, Command-J. 